welcome back to the channel everybody and uh, on this lovely July 21st 2024 and uh, just heading out for a little ride and mainly to uh, talk about the uh, GS 1300 Adventure now I'm uh, be a bit late putting a video out on it mostly because I didn't have the time to do one of them that was first announced but actually now looking back maybe it was good to uh, hang back a bit and uh, see what the rest of the uh, the biker world makes of it and uh, rather than just jumping straight in with first emotions and uh, so basically I did do a, a video on my first impressions of the standard 1300 GS which I'll put the card up for it if you want to go and have a look at that one because uh, this sort of chat is kind of connected to that of course we'll be comparing the two uh, to some extent but most commenting on the new adventure so I'm out on my uh, 1250 GS Adventure Triple Black and uh, we'll try and get some nice pictures of it as we go along and stop here and there I've also uh, built up a little list of points or comments that I've uh, gleaned from other YouTubers uh, who have commented some I thought, you know, yeah, good point and some I was thinking, well, I'm going to be relevant to some people, I'm sure yeah, so I'm trying to give a little round up of just, just thoughts this is not a technical spec breakdown or a, a, review, a full outright review of the product this is just a first impressions second impressions maybe now that it's been out for a few weeks and just what I think uh, of the bike so yeah when I first saw the uh, first picture of the adventure and uh, they released it with a red colour and uh, in hindsight now I'm thinking of it perhaps I wouldn't have picked that if I was them or mine because it, uh, it highlighted the, uh, the blockiness of the petrol tank the two uh, silver coloured uh, tank panel and the luggage mount or whatever it is at the front there and it just made it look like you know, a Tonka toy or uh, a Lego block because afterwards when you actually go onto the website and look at all the other colours you know, the, the, the green Tamasalata one although that's not called that is it um, and the triple black and the, the trophy the, those two front parts on the tank from the side view are different colours and much better I don't think we would have had as much of a reaction uh, to it had they gone with a different picture from the, the different colours but anyway that's what I think and uh, well ultimately uh, the view from the tank uh, from the tank the view from the cockpit looking at the tank and uh, you realize that yeah no it's not blocky at all and uh, the cockpit view is absolutely fine and uh, not too dissimilar uh, from the, the 1250 that I'm on now so that was kind of uh, good to see that they haven't actually made a, a total you know, the blockiness doesn't uh, also be seen from the uh, the rider's perspective so do I like the, uh, the way they've done to the, the new tank with the front uh, sort of luggage mount system I mean yes at the end of the day these bikes are going to spend a long uh, time on the roads not necessarily off roads but on the roads touring so the ability to uh, have a, a a luggage system or some other systems to be able to securely attach to the side of the tank uh, will definitely be useful I mean, we say luggage at the moment but uh, it could be uh, all sorts of things that uh, third party suppliers might come up with depending on what the bike's being used for so yeah so from the, the blockiness point of view I was initially sort of taken back but when I went online and I had to look at the, all the other colours I went, oh no, of course not, it's not it is not that bad that's first impression with the red now, I don't know if they went with the red colour scheme first as a way of illustrating that you do have two sections to the side of the tank but I think the perception was initially uh, uh, a bit negative maybe because it looked, it more, it looked more, as I said, more Tonka toy, more you know, Lego blocks this goes to show, you know, to see your marketing you think you're going for one thing and all of a sudden you have something else come out that uh, you didn't uh, anticipate 
would come to that that sort of strength of view. So yeah, so the new uh, pictures I thought, first impressions, comparing it to the 1300s, the standard 1300, I was thinking, well, my first impression of the 1300 standard was that, you know, the front mudguard, the nose, the beak was a bit beaky, a bit too pointy, and I think this is the same with the Adventure as well, a bit too pointy for me. And, uh, but perhaps, uh, you know, some third party might come up with a little sort of shoe you can mount onto it just to give it a bit more body, just to make it a bit more manlier, if that's the word. And, uh, thing was that I realized that they said was that the, the wheelbase, whatever it is, is a bit shorter. You know, I don't think that I'll notice when anybody would notice that it's shorter, unless you're really pushing the bike to the limits where that sort of thing matters. So yeah, I just pulled over here just to go through my list that I made about all the things I <clears throat> came across and just wanted to mention. <clears throat> well, I mean, the the adventure comes with all the usual electronics, so I'm not going to go into all the, the, the specialties in that, and um, except uh, the uh, the gearbox, which we'll come to in a bit. Um, but again, the uh, with the uh, radar. Uh, options it um, the rear light is uh, non-existent and uh, that is certainly something that uh, I find uh, what's the word they use nowadays problematic yeah the engine is basically the same as a 1300 standard and uh, I do like the shorter exhaust uh, as with the uh, 1300 standard as opposed to this uh, big can that we have on the 1250 which is fine but uh, I wonder if they'll ever come up with a those two piece smaller exhaust for the 1250 It'd be interesting and the other thing that some other people have commented on is the little extended uh, crash bars that they have little winglets that are sitting on the extended engine bars there now yeah i mean it looks like they're to cope with the bike being a bit maybe further sorry being, being a bit more top heavy so potentially if it does fall on its side those uh, little wing ringlets uh, will hold the bike up uh, a bit more making it easier to uh, get it back on its uh, on its wheels <coughs> If we notice there was no upper crash bars on the uh, new 1300 adventure so we don't have uh, the scaffolding work that uh, for me i really like but i presume they've made room for the uh, luggage uh, attachments and maybe that's why they added the ringlets at the bottom because potentially if you've got huge heavy bags strapped to the t tank as, as further weight out towards the top of the bike and potentially when it falls over it will uh, be even harder to pick up so those wheel and winglets perhaps are helping in uh, getting the bike back up now we know about uh, the big thing uh, which is the uh, the automatic uh, gearbox <clears throat> all the talks seem to be talking about you know you either have the automatic uh, gearbox in uh, manual mode or automatic mode but I'm just wondering, well, is it still optional just to have the quick shift without the automatic? And so I had a quick run around the, uh, the website and the configurator. And yeah, I could actually pick just the quick shift uh, by itself without the automatic. So we could have the same arrangements as we currently have with the 1250 as of, uh, was it 2022? We want to come on which, which year we came up with it. Um, so you can still have that option without the automatic option. Uh, and uh, and since on the actual configurator you can pick the two options which is the quick shift and the automatic but the, if you don't pick either I presume you just get a manual because I can see when I don't pick either I get a clutch on the imaging so what else 
Yeah, there's a, the subframe at the back here. They have a sort of a proprietary one with new luggage mounting system. For a new luggage system, I'm no doubt they will sell us. As they're saying with the, with the I'll go back to the clutch thing. You know, people who are often said, were often saying on the various other vlogs is that, who asked for this? Who would ask for a, a potentially off-road bike? with quick shift and, uh, you know, with a, oh, and no clutch option. I was thinking slipping the clutch. It'd be quite a, a, a uh, required driving skill when you're going off-road, particularly. As for the automatic, I'm just thinking, well, I don't know what it what is going to behave like. You know, I, I don't like the idea of the bike pulling surprises on me when I'm banking around a turn. You know, all of a sudden it decides to go down a, cl uh, down a gear while I'm, you know, I don't know, 30 degrees, 20 degrees or whatever. When you're not really maybe paying that much attention to the, the bike and you're just looking at the road and lo and behold, it goes down a gear. So yeah, so very interesting. Uh, and that was going to actually work out in reality. And now we can look at the... Uh, the gold wings and the like with their automatic uh, brakes uh, clutch system and uh, gears uh, automatic gears because uh, i'm sure this this will be something similar in behavior even though technology wise it's a bit different so what else the tank yep yeah. 30 liters 380 miles ish which i've just literally filled up on this one i've got three nine seven Nice to squeeze in there. Yeah, uh, of course the uh, the big change with the, the 1300s is the headlight. I still am not with it. Although on the uh, Adventure, 1300 Adventure, I, uh, it's less of offensive to me, if that's the word, because of those extra lights, uh, daylight running lights to the side of it. They seem to sort of accompany it and mask it a bit. So it's, uh, even though I still don't like it, but I don't like it less, if you get what I mean. Yeah, and some people mentioned to me that they don't like the integrated indicators into the, the handlebars of the protectors there. Uh, they seem to be pretty shielded. So I don't know whether, you know, put through the same sort of rough uh, paces off-road, whether you lose more of these than those so even though it's, it's both probably expensive to replace but I was wondering whether you know you snap more of these off then you would actually damage those they might get scuffs and breaks and you might be able to re replace the lens but I did but you know hardware wise speaking it's pretty shielded uh, in that I don't know I wonder what your thoughts are so just to wrap up this bit as I said earlier would I buy it uh, well I'm more inclined I think to give it a proper shake of the stick than I did the standard GS because uh, it is more closer to the adventure uh, that we uh, the 1250 that we love apart from the headlight bit than, uh, than anything else or my opinion anyway and uh, so I'm willing to yeah, give it time I think I probably will like it but bearing in mind how BMW broke the link between the, the standard GS and the Adventure with this 1300 range. Makes me think what the uh, 1400 GS, GSA is going to be like. Are they going to make a further break in look at design and just design another bike that is just purely uh, on its own uh, and not just a 1300 Adventure with a bigger engine? Because that would be interesting. And again, if the headlight is there, which I'm sure it will be, they spend so much money on it, it's whether it can be masked further, hidden further, not looking very prominent at the front of the bike, uh, then maybe that would be a, uh, a definite possibility. We will have to wait for that uh, when, when, when that comes out. So yeah, to, to summarize, if I do I like, do I love, the new GS 1300 Adventure. I uh, don't love it. I like it better than the standard uh, 1300. So I'm willing to give it a, uh, a 
a chance, uh, more so. 1300, standard 1300, no, I personally, it's not for me. I think I've made that decision on the other video, which if you put a link up to it again here, or what we did earlier in this, in this video, go have a look at that, or what my thoughts were on that. So yeah, so very interesting. It's very interesting to watch other uh, YouTubers uh, react uh, to the new adventure. And uh, the tank certainly, or the side view of the red version, red color of the, uh, the adventure certainly got people talking. It looked like a, a key fob or a Tonka toy or a, a Lego part of the tank on the side purely simply because those two pieces on the side were the same color, the silver color, just made it look wrong. But the cockpit view, absolutely fine. And when you went to look at the other colors, I said the trophy and the triple black particularly, I liked it. Uh, there was, that sort of narrowed it down to me that it was just the headlight I didn't like. The rest of it was fine. I liked the triple black. The, uh, the green one, I don't know what it is, the Tama Salata, which wasn't the old uh, 1300 standard. Um, that was fine, that was good. Oh, 917, is it? They just call it just 917. Um, that's, no, that's fine. Again, they've, they've, they've got the two tones of the tank, so they didn't have that uh, first reaction to it. And, uh, so, which is good. So, uh, overall, I'm uh, a lot happier uh, with the uh, 1300 Adventure than I was with a standard 1300. Hello, I've got a motorcyclist behind me. Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, it's funny how sometimes some motorcyclists react to when they spot they're, they're being filmed. Most don't bother. Uh, some wave, which is a nice thing. So yeah, uh, I will just pull up here and talk about something I'm planning for the next video. I love this part of the country. Let's find a nice place to pull up here and I'll go through my ideas for the next uh, the 1400. Right, so I just pulled over here to uh, enjoy this lovely view and uh, basically talk about the idea I have for my next video, which is I'm going to cover the uh, GS1400 uh, that's due to be released at some point, I can imagine this year or so. Um, but what I'm going to talk about, and maybe you guys can put a a comment in the uh, comment section there is what would your wish list be of what to have on the uh, 1400 when it is announced crazy things wacky things you know should it have uh, an automatic um, center stand you know like some uh, harleys and they believe indians whatever have a, an electric center stand maybe it's time for that since we're heading down all this electrical route and uh, automation so my thoughts are you know could it have an electric center stand uh, could it have um, a self-writing mechanism I forget what I mean because these things are so heavy now often when I get to a traffic light on the GS and I brake and I'm slightly off center you know looks like I'm gonna go it's gonna go over so what I do is uh, you know panic a bit but I just want to have some uh, like segway technology built in that as soon as you stop, that sort of thing kicks in and just keeps the bike more upright. Hey, there you go. See, you heard it here first. I should patent that. Well, that's probably patented. Uh, 
But anyway, so ideas like that. Uh, for a bit of fun. I've already got quite a few uh, scribbled down, so if you do have uh, any you think, uh, well, here's a wacky idea. Let's, uh, let's see if BMW are brave enough to, uh, you know, stick that on and uh, break the mold and take the lead uh, in uh, this new technology uh, on motorcycles. So I hope you uh, like my quick little uh, ride there and uh, talking about the new uh, 1300 uh, adventure. Uh, it's just my thoughts, silly thoughts. So if you have uh, any comments, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong in places because I'm pretty sure I've got something wrong somewhere. So please feel free to uh, put it in the comments. And uh, if you like this video, uh, please tinkle that bell. And also uh, click a like uh, on this video if you did like it. Uh, it's always nice to uh, know if people uh, uh, do like the stuff I'm doing uh, or not. And uh, I'm not uh, out to make a, a fortune uh, on YouTube. I'm just doing this for fun. Hope you enjoyed it too. And uh, I will uh, leave you with a bit of footage of me just driving around uh, this lovely countryside. And, uh, and I'll catch you on the next one, people. So ride safe. Enjoy uh, this lovely weather we're having. And uh, keep riding. Keep going. Take care. Bye-bye for now.